We are talking He Comes to Kill. This is a 2022 low-budget slasher movie from writer, director and producer August Aguilar. The budget of this movie is only $5,000, so we have to look at this through the lens of a micro-budget movie. If you're a fan of the Halloween slasher movie franchise, and you don't mind a, bud, a bit of a budget affair, then you may want to check it out because this movie is clearly influenced by Halloween. So this is a film where there has already been some type of uh, massacre in this small American town and the perpetrator, uh, this Stanley Elk, is in this kind of mental asylum and he escapes with the help of a guard that kind of worships him and goes on another rampage and this effectively follows the character of Stanley Elk going through a, ver a variety of victims uh, and a couple of people trying to kind of stop him things like that and that's kind of it it's very simple in regards to any real plot it doesn't really have a narrative as such exactly uh, but it's a very straightforward slasher movie with a masked killer who has, you know, unstoppable kind of strength, doesn't speak. It's you're, you're effectively your Michael Myers clone here. Had this had a, uh, a you know a um, William Shatner mask and called it a Halloween fan film, I wouldn't have kind of known any different. So let's talk about what I think works in this movie's favour. For a five thousand dollar budget movie, I've got to say it was a quite a fun film. Now this is only a relatively short film it's 50 minutes so it's fairly punchy in regards to um its storytelling uh we have this crazed a bunch of lunatics running around in full costume at the beginning including a couple of kind of like joker inspired uh maniacs in this uh asylum which doesn't really look like an asylum to be honest uh but it's kind of a fun aesthetic and we do get quite a lot of uh, victims, considering the kind of the run short, the short run time, including a uh, an attack at a party with multiple victims, and we get a couple of uh, characters who put up a kind of a reasonable fight. Uh, the, the probably the best being the kind of the DJ at this uh, party, who uh, seems to be quite tough on his own right. So it's a, it's quite a lot going on, and again, considering the budget, I think you have quite a lot of. You know, people in the movie, I wouldn't say necessarily actors, I don't think they're, they're actors by trade, many of them, but there's, they have a large cast at least. And I think aesthetically at least, it's it's impressive for a, such a low budget film. You know, I think it's shot relatively well. Um, had you told me this had been a $5,000 budget, budget movie, there's some areas where it does look low budget, but I've got to say, I think it, it, it does kind of... Um, I've seen a lot worse from films that cost a lot more of this, is kind of what I'm saying, I have to say. The killer itself, again, it's very much the mould of the Michael Myers kind of clone here. Um, but nonetheless, it still is quite an enigmatic kind of character and uh, uh, an interesting one. One of the aspects that I liked here, that I know has kind of been uh, covered in, in, in even Halloween movies, is this, this cult aspect where... Uh, certain individuals within this kind of uh, small town hold this Stanley Elk in some kind of reverence and kind of worship him and they're willing to be sacrificed to him to get his kind of body count up. I thought that was kind of quite a neat idea. And although this movie isn't particularly kind of gory, again, it's limited in regards to its budget, there is a, you know, a reasonable amount of kills with some a, a couple of okay low budget kind of uh, practical effects here mostly it's kind of like after the effect you know a, a body with like a knife hanging out or a bit of a wound you don't particularly see um the actual kind of kills themselves so to speak uh so you know it, it has a, a degree of, of kind of humor in it with it as well the film generally has somewhat of a nihilistic tone uh we have this kind of town where you know we have this kind of deranged psycho but he goes into town we got our you know our sh local sheriff he's kind of a massive cokehead we got this guy at the bar who's seemingly kidnapping and abusing women 
So it is somewhat of a kind of exploitation film in some ways, uh, to be honest. Uh, what doesn't work in this movie? I mean, this film is such a clone of, of the Halloween franchise. It's it's almost like it may as well have been a, a Halloween fan film. I almost suspect it might have started out that way. Um, you know, he's wearing a boiler suit. He's wearing a kind of mask with kind of hair on it. Um, it, it's, it's very similar. It doesn't speak. It's, I think, why not just kind of slightly change the mask, call them a different name, and then we can, it can be sold commercially. But effectively, it's, it, it, other than that, it kind of feels like it should be a, uh, a Halloween fan film. So it's, it's, it's derivative, effectively, of what is what I'm saying. One of the, um, the interesting things, I suppose, is maybe down to the fact that this is, uh, you know, it's a relatively um, amateur film in some ways. Is narratively there's no protagonist in this that you don't follow any anyone. It's really just kind of like random people coming up against this this killer, and you know you you start to follow like the police chief and we get a couple of scenes from him and then he's taken care of. There's a couple of girls. Oh, we think they, is this going to be like another you know final girl? No, he just it's just kind of like we get a little bit of introduction with some people, but we never really follow anyone. So you never really feel like you're going along with the story because it's not really a story. It just is effectively a bunch of kind of random encounters, um, which is, is, if you just want a very basic slasher, then, then you know, fair enough. I think that it does that side of stuff uh, to a entertaining standard, but it's not, certainly not a deep film. Considering this obviously is a good of a low budget, we do have to kind of um, factor that in. So, you know, I, I'm forgiving of things like the effects and stuff like that. Uh, but there are there are still some things here that I felt could have been improved upon. I think they, they could have certainly been more set up. I don't know why they've only decided to go for a 15 minute film when it kind of ends somewhat ambiguously and you feel like there's, there's certainly more that could have been done to sort of introduce the, sort of the characters and this guy's kind of previous um, exploits already in the movie because it, you kind of go in pretty cold. Um, so I think the movie could have been actually a little longer, to be honest with you, and actually had a little bit more context in it to give it more of a kind of a well-rounded film and still have that sort of the actual character of Stanley still be our main character, but at least give it some sort of more context. As with low budget movies, you know, some of the acting isn't particularly strong from some characters, some of the kind of the VFX isn't particularly strong, things like that. Um, and it's a little kind of on, on the hokey side. But I have to give credit where credit is due. I feel this filmmaker has for the budget that it's that it's been made from, five thousand dollars, it still is relatively kind of well put together outside of the narrative. On a technical level, it's it's fairly proficiently made. I'll I'll give it that. It's just narratively there's nothing to it. Um so you know it's if you don't mind a low budget film, um it has an entertainment value. I will give it a five out of ten. Have you seen it? What did you think of it? Please do leave me a comment and I shall look forward to it next time. Bye for now.